when's the last time you did an audit of your email marketing? I know it's not the most glamorous thing to do, not the, definitely not the funnest thing to do, but it is something that it could be pivotal in your business, understanding what's performing well, making sure things aren't broken, making sure everything's working as it should is so important in your email marketing. In today's video, I'm going to run through exactly what I do monthly for my clients when I'm running through and I want to audit, make sure everything's working smoothly, but also when I want to prepare ahead for the next month for strategies and three months from now, doing these monthly audits can really tell me where the next direction to go. Okay, so let's start with item number one, and that is going to be checking in on your list health and list growth. Keeping a pulse on list health and like list growth is something that is kind of like, I mean, the lifeblood of your email marketing, right? These are the people that you're communicating with. So each month when I'm looking at list health, I want to take note of, you know, all of the new leads who came in. What was their source? How many hard bounced? How many unsubscribed? Who's our most engaged? Because when you really dig into the data of your new subscribers, I mean, that can tell you where your advertising dollars are going and, and where you're getting the most bang for your buck. So say, for instance, you had this, you know, partnership last month with, you know, a certain ad partner and they brought in all these new leads and then you looked and it's like, oh God, you know, like half of them hard bounce. They were all bad. You know, doing these check-ins to just find that clear line of like, okay, this initiative we just did, it did damage to our email list, not doing that again. So that's, that's so important. Another thing is just kind of understanding like, okay, when I am sending out my emails, you know, maybe you've been doing full email blasts, right? And your engagement is starting to go down. This is also important when you go in for your monthly audit, like how much of your subscribers are starting to go cold? Do you have flows in place to help win them back? Or maybe it's time to really retire those super cold leads because now they're, they could do damage to your email deliverability to your performance and just doing a cleanup each month can be huge. But honestly, you can mostly automate that process. Another common scenario I see with some list growth and like list health problems is not a steady flow of new subscribers. So when you're looking at that monthly audit and you can say, OK, compared to last month, you know, we are up at least 50 subscribers total, you know, versus our unsubscribes. This month, we're kind of up 10 and, you know, maybe it's next month, you're only up five. So you're kind of slowly starting to decline on your list growth. You know, that can be a huge indicator to say, OK, what pop ups are we running? Are those doing a good job on bringing in new subscribers or maybe advertising initiatives just aren't working as well? Because bringing in fresh subscribers is really just like this extra boost in energy to your email engagement. So super important to have fresh subscribers coming in. Okay, second item is going to be your flow, your automation performance. The main piece here is you just want to make sure things aren't breaking. You have these automations that you have set up, they're running, you know, they're doing their job, but you never know if something was missed during the launch or maybe something has changed. So many times I'll go in and have things kind of set up and ready for a Shopify, um, you know, partner who's working like with Klaviyo, right? And I'll go in and they've changed the whole structure of how their products are set up. So all of the abandoned cart flows no longer correctly pull information anymore. So things like that, doing that monthly check in could help avoid just wasted, wasted, you know, dollars as far as what you could have had if your emails were correct when they were going out. So go through your flows. Take a look at the contacts who are entering in. Go into those contacts accounts. What emails did they also receive? Do you have flows that are competing against each other? You know, like two running at the same time that really shouldn't. They should be filtering each other out. Another piece to this is just going through your emails, right? So we want to make sure, okay, in my flow, I have some abandoned cart emails and it looks like email number two has the lowest open rate. Why is that? Okay, let's compare the other subject lines versus that one subject line. And it seems like this message is doing better. So let's throw in a new subject line here. So during this audit, you can really kind of, um, I mean, pull together the stats and like boost the performance of your flow month to month by doing this kind of dive in and taking a look at what's doing the best performance wise and what isn't. So you can make the changes. Of course, you could go through each individual message and check all the links and check all the copy and all those things. Uh, always great to do that. And maybe it's hard to do that each month, but definitely can be a big piece if you just want to make sure everything is all set and operating as it should. Okay, so number three is going to be A-B testing. 
So I always recommend that you should have some A-B testing going on where it's needed. So many times, oh, so many times, I'll go into an account and see that every single thing, every email, every pop-up has an A-B test with nothing to really show from it. Nobody's taking that data and like applying that to a successful message in the future, right? It's just constantly testing. I do not recommend that. So if you are a person who likes to A-B test, that's great, but make sure you're testing, you know, a certain element at a time. So if it's with your pop-ups, maybe it's changing just the copy or it's changing just the color of a button. Doing those small kind of like head-to-head -head tests can let you know what actually is driving people to engage and ver versus just having a completely new B test. But also make sure that your A-B tests have I mean, they've, they've run their course, right? You don't want to have your A-B test just continuously running until who knows, like maybe one day you'll remember, oh yeah, I was running that. No. So in your monthly audit, go in, what's an A-B test that's been running? Does it have clear results yet? If it has, then go ahead, pick your winner, let that winner run. Or if you want to do another test on top of that to test a new element versus what you were originally testing, you can now do that. So in that monthly audit process, go through, look at all your A-B tests and pick out those clear winners. Number four is going to be metric polling or basically performance data. What I like to do is go through all of the campaign sends for that month. Sometimes I even go back and maybe just do a full like 60 day poll just to just see how data has been going on even longer than just the month. What I'm doing here is I want to understand, OK, we've been running these initiatives with these campaigns. What did the best performance wise? And I mean like open engagement, hard bounces, unsubscribed, really pulling everything out so I can pull clear information from it. Also, what I like to do with this is pull like specific metric data. So for instance, I'll pull an abandoned cart report and look and see what item was, you know, abandoned the most, right? So we see like this huge influx of people who didn't move forward on purchasing product A, right? okay, well, maybe that's a new initiative. Maybe let's build a branch in our abandoned cart sequence and it's dedicated to everyone who abandons this product so we can send them more nurture content, maybe a special offer, uh, some reviews about the product, just really doing some targeted campaigns and flow improvements based off of actual data. Because that's the main thing you really want to focus on. You don't want to just launch things based off a hunch, based off of this is I hear this all the time. I would never, or like, I don't like to, it's not about you, it's about your subscribers. So look at the data. The data is as true as it can be. So if your data is saying that, you know, your subscribers are interacting with emojis and subject lines, well, darn it, emojis and subject lines, it is. You can really go overboard with these full reports. I like to do that. So I'll do, I'll, I mean, I'll basically pull everything as raw CSV data, then I'll put it into a Google sheet and then I'll pull all the information into a data studio. And that will really tell me everything I need to know. That gets very complicated. Maybe I can do a video um, about that and kind of show that process on how to do really kind of, uh, kind of almost kind of evergreen in depth reporting. Um, but if you really want to pull that out and just have some clear information each month when you export all the data and you plug it into a sheet and have that fuel all of your dashboards, that can be a great way to just pull summaries super quickly or just go through the data. Just put it all into an Excel, filter all your campaigns, filter it by, uh, you know, open rates and select your top five and then pull it by click rates and select your top five and then just review each email. What made them successful? Let's try it again. Maybe that could be an A-B test. Let's A-B test two of our best, um, you know, uh, click through emails. Something about the content and how it was formulated spoke to our subscribers. So let's use that in next month. So the biggest thing here is that it's fueling new initiatives and really targeted smart campaigns that are based off of data. And number five, this is what I like to call the fresh eyes approach. Basically put yourself in the shoes of where your subscribers are coming from. Go through the journey, see how the emails hit your inbox, and then take from that uh, to maybe fuel some changes or fuel new strategy or just to fix some issues sometimes. There's just issues that might pop up that you don't really see clearly when just looking at the flow or looking at contact profiles. And one helpful hint, if you didn't know this, if you want to kind of throw in your email into, I mean, any email marketing and you just want to like test it, you can do your main email address and then just put plus one or plus test or plus whatever. And that will basically feed the email into your real inbox, but 
your email providers and uh, or your email software will basically treat that as if it's a brand new email subscribing with its own journey and everything. Um, so that's just a trick if you want to keep testing things, but not with your current profile. Okay, so those are my top five pieces that I like to review monthly as far as an email audit goes. I made a quick checklist. It's in the description down below that you can follow along with. You could uh, you know, save it and then kind of refer back to it. And each month, it has all the steps that basically I like to do when I'm auditing uh, email marketing and their performance of the account and just making sure everything is in tip top shape. All right, so that's gonna be it for me and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.